Sometimes our quilt blocks just don't come out the right size. Today, I'm gonna to give you some ways that will help you try to save them. Welcome to Eva to Studio. My name is Elizabeth and I help you make beautiful things with quilting, pojagi, and embroidery. So sometimes when we're making quilt blocks and quilt units, in spite of our best efforts, they just don't come out the right size. Sometimes our seam allowance is off or maybe the fabric's thicker than we thought, but we end up with the wrong size finished piece. Now, if you're making a modern quilt that has all different size pieces that are joined together, then you can use some of these same principles, but the math might be a little bit trickier. But I'm gonna be talking today about if you're making quilt blocks, traditional blocks that go together in rows and columns, and what you can do to help kind of save the block that you've made to be able to use it in your project. So there are a couple of different things that can go wrong in your piece. So one common thing that happens when you're quilting is that your blocks end up too small. Let's say you had a pattern and you wanted 12 and a half inch blocks and they ended up being 12 and a quarter inches. Well, the first thing you would do in this situation is measure all your blocks. Because if all your blocks are the same size and they're gonna be going together into rows and columns, then that's not a problem. You can just join them, or if you're putting in sashing, adjust the sashing size to the size of blocks you have, um, and then it, it will work no problem. So if your seam allowance is slightly off and all your blocks are small, you can still use them, that's not a problem. But what if you have just one block that is smaller than all the other blocks? Then what would you do with it? Well, one little trick is to take a piece of fabric and add fabric around all the sides of your block and then you can trim it down to the size you need. And this is kind of like adding a tiny, tiny bit of sashing around the block and that can help it fit to the size that you need. If you have one block that is too big, then that is a different problem. And the way you wanna treat it depends on the kind of block that you have. So if you have a block like a nine patch or a log cabin or something like that that has all squares and rectangles around the edge, you can usually just trim that down to be the size that you want. And your pieces on the outside will be slightly smaller, but it's not usually noticeable. However, if you have something that has a lot of triangles and points, then you might wanna consider because if you trim it down, you'll be cutting off the points of all your pieces. So in that situation, you would wanna consider how much you have to trim off and what that's gonna look like when your piece is joined together. And so you'll have to make a judgment call on what you wanna do about that. Sometimes you might be fine with trimming your piece and just losing the little tips of your corners and other times you won't wanna do that. So here's a sample block, and this is a block that I made for a uh, quilt that I was doing. And this is all paper pieced, and I did not check my scale when I printed my pattern, and so these paper pieces that I printed were all too small. So this block was supposed to be a 12 and a half inch block, and it ended up being a 12 inch block. Now, because this is a really intricate pattern with a lot of little pieces. I wasn't comfortable just adding border. So in this case, I did just redo the block. I printed it at the proper scale and redid it. So now I have this little bonus block left over from that project. So sometimes you might have to redo the block. You won't be able to save it, but it's worth thinking through the process to think if you can save it or not. Now these blocks are a bunch of blocks that I was given and they're all just scrappy log cabin blocks. And when they were put together, they have pretty inconsistent seam allowances and inconsistent sizes. This one's not even really square. Um, so I don't know who made these, they were just given to me. And so obviously because there are so many different sizes, I couldn't just use them as is. 
but what I did is I measured them to find what was kind of the smallest um, size and then I started trimming them down so I'm trimming them down so that they are all the same size and they will go together um, they'll fit together nicely now you can see some of them are not perfectly square some of the uh, strips on the side um, you can see with these two for example um, like this red strip on the side those are two different widths but the blocks are the same size so they're going to go together and especially for a scrappy project like this that is a perfect fix because it's going to go together and it's still going to look great when it's done so you'll have to consider um, kind of what type of quilt this is what the purpose of the quilt is how much um, perfection you are going for in your blocks and then you can decide what's the best way to get your blocks all the same size so you can't always save your blocks but it's worth thinking about can i add some extra fabric on the edge to make it bigger or can i trim it down to make it smaller because a lot of times you can save the block uh, when I teach workshops, I tell students I do anything to avoid ripping out seams. So if there is a shortcut, then I will probably think of it. For more quilting tutorials and inspiration, be sure to check out evadastudio.com.